this is probably my best purchase of 2021. I said it, <laughs> my best purchase of 2021. Good morning guys and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is kind of a fun video. I have a little bit of a perfume haul but this is also a collaboration video with Amanda Soignier who is also here on YouTube and if you guys haven't heard of Amanda Soignier she has a beautiful YouTube channel. She has very high-end luxury niche fragrance taste so if you are into those fragrances and you're looking for some really good recommendations I would head on over there and check her out. I will leave her channel as well as her Instagram and her video for for today linked down below in my description box and I'm telling you guys this girl can steer me no wrong. I have purchased two perfumes already based on her recommendation or perfumes that she has told me she thought I would really love and I was a little nervous because they were both blind and I turned out to love, absolutely love both of them. So today I'm going to be sharing with you a perfume that I bought blindly based on her recommendation and her video today is going to be about a perfume that she bought blindly based on my recommendation. So I hope you guys really enjoy this little collaboration. Amanda is a very sweet girl. She has a beautiful Instagram Instagram feed if you're looking for inspiration on luxury fashion if you like travel if you like all things luxury perfume definitely head on over there and check her out she is such a nice person I think you guys would really really enjoy her channel and if this is your first time on my channel thank you so much for stopping by my name is Alithia and on this channel we talk mostly about perfume so if that is your thing definitely make sure to head on down and hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell so that you are notified every time I upload a video and feel free to head on over and follow me on my Instagram as well where I share a lot of outfits of the day, scents of the day, minimalism, home decor, decluttering, and of course a ton of perfume related content. And without further ado, let's get started in today's video. Okay guys, so the very first thing I'll share with you in today's haul was just something I purchased of my own free will and accord, obviously. Not a blind buy, not a recommendation. This is a backup bottle of my Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. So if you guys watch my channel, you know that Miss Dior is my absolute favorite, favorite daytime perfume for women of all time. I feel like you cannot go wrong with this perfume. I absolutely love it. This particular bottle I have had um, since I believe 2019, so I've still got about 75% of it left, and it's going to take me a little bit of time to go through this bottle, but I heard that Miss Dior Eau de Parfum is being reformulated yet again. I don't know why they keep changing a good thing, but apparently it's going to be reformulated in September again. And you guys, I cannot be without a version of Miss Dior that I love. This is one of my favorite perfumes and if they reformulate it and it turns out to be not a very good formulation or one that I just don't enjoy, I will be very upset. <laughs> so yeah, as soon as I found out it was going to be reformulated, I rushed out and grabbed myself a 100ml backup bottle. And honestly, I almost want to get another one because once they're gone, they're gone. It's going to be really difficult to find these old formulations. If you guys are interested in getting yourself a bottle of this while you still can, I will have links down below for Canada, US. Um, I'll try to do some worldwide if I'll just put as many links as I can find basically to like reputable vendors. Um, I ordered mine from the Bay in Canada and just because I knew that it would be a fairly recent batch um, and I knew that it would be really good quality, whatever, because obviously I'm going to be leaving this in the box and um, I don't want it to go bad. I want it to be protected from light and all of that kind of stuff. I suppose for those of you who are new and haven't heard of Miss Dior before, I'll tell you just quickly a little bit about what it smells like. This is a sweet orange rose patchouli fragrance. It's a very classy perfume. It's very sophisticated. Um, it's sweet but without being too sweet it just has an element of elegance to it that I think you cannot beat for a women's daytime perfume this is like my go-to if I could only ever have one daytime perfume for the rest of my life this would be that perfume I yeah I just absolutely love this as far as I'm concerned you can do no wrong with this perfume I also really like the absolutely blooming I'm kind of tempted to get a bottle of that because between this one and absolutely blooming I think I could honestly just wear those two back and forth interchangeably and I would be happy. Like Absolutely Blooming is a little bit sweeter. It's got some more raspberry in it. It's definitely a sweeter perfume. Whereas this one is a little bit more about that patchouli and that rose. And I think this one smells a little bit more classy and maybe has a bit more of that timeless elegance to it. Whereas Absolutely Blooming has a little bit more of a modern fruity twist. 
And yeah, I just wanted to quickly share my thoughts on that with you guys. And now let's move into new perfumes. The next perfume I've been wanting to talk to you guys about for a while, I've had this in my collection for a couple of weeks now, is Pinrose Secret Genius. Now this perfume was actually a blind purchase. I looked at the notes, I thought it sounded amazing. And to be honest, you guys, it does smell really good, but I have to say I'm not blown away by it. Um, so before I get into what it smells like, let me show you a close up of the bottle. So the bottle is obviously really gorgeous. It almost looks like the Tiffany bottles. It has that kind of multifaceted um, stone-like appearance to it. And it does have a bit of a plasticky lid. That's the only thing I don't really love about it. Um, but the bottle itself is really beautiful. The notes that you have in here also sound incredible, which is why I was so fast to run out and buy myself a bottle. And so you have caramel, white chocolate, Madagascar vanilla, sandalwood, and cedar. And what I really get from this, you guys, it really smells exactly like what the notes make it sound like. So it's chocolatey, it's sweet, it's caramel, it's vanilla. It's a very kind of sensual, yeah, it's a very sensual warm fragrance. If you know what sandalwood smells like, just imagine a gourmand caramel chocolate smell with sandalwood. Um, so it kind of almost reminds me of when Bath and Body Works used to have the vanilla sandalwood candle. Very, very similar to that, except with a little bit of a gourmand touch. So there's like a little bit more caramel and some chocolate. Really cozy and comforting and warm. What I mean when I say that this is not blowing my mind is that it doesn't smell super unique. I feel like I've smelt it before. I'm not sure where, whether it was in a candle, whether it was in some sort of a lotion. I got somewhere, but I do feel like I've smelt this before and it just isn't like groundbreaking, but it does smell very savory and comforting. So yeah, not completely mind blown by it. I do have other gourmand perfumes I like a lot more than this one, including Zerjaf Lira. This perfume is not super, super long lasting and it's not going to project either. It's definitely not going to be filling a room. It kind of sits a little bit closer to the skin, probably within about... 15, 20 minutes, you're looking at a skin scent. But that being said, it is a very comforting, cozy skin scent. For what it's meant to do, I think it's a great perfume. It's a little bit more of an intimate, um, closer to the skin, softer, gourmand fragrance, and it does smell really good. I think I can't imagine somebody not liking the way it smells. It's just like, it's not a mind-blowing, groundbreaking perfume by any means, but yeah, it is really nice. So that is Pinrose secret genius. Okay, the next fragrance I have to show you guys is going to have some people thinking I'm a little bit crazy, but I don't care. <laughs> I'm a human and I am subject to changing my mind and that is what has happened with this perfume. So I am giving Delina a second chance. Essentially, I had had Delina from Parfums de Marly in my collection in spring of 2020 and it was kind of a blind trade with a subscriber. And at that time, I think I was just too new to niche perfume. I hadn't had enough time with niche perfume and I wasn't ready for what this perfume was. I found it to be a little too sharp, too incensey, too spicy. Um, there was just something about it that I didn't like, something that gave me a bit of a headache. It kind of rubbed my nose the wrong way and I just didn't see the hype. I just plain and simple did not see the big deal with this perfume. However, very shortly after that, I fell in love with Delina Exclusive, which is a little bit more of a creamy vanilla woody fragrance. It's a little bit more sensual than this one. It's a little bit more vanilla leaning. It's not quite as tart. It's not quite as spicy. I've been loving Delina Exclusive. And for some reason, lately I've been craving this perfume. I don't know what it is. I don't know how suddenly my nose has seemed to mature or change or whatever the case is, but for some reason I was really craving the rhubarb, lychee, sort of musky, incensey accord that you get with this perfume. So the notes that you have in here are lychee, rhubarb, bergamot, nutmeg, Turkish rose, peony, musk, petalia, vanilla, and in the base you have cashmere, cedar, Haitian vetiver, and incense. And and what I mostly get from this perfume, you guys, is a little bit of a spicy, fresh, lychee, tart, rhubarb, with a little bit of a vanilla woody undertone, but it's mostly a fresh, fruity floral. And I know that when I was looking into buying perfumes back in the day, when somebody said, this is a fresh, fruity floral that costs $450, I was like, I don't think so. <laughs> 
I am not paying $400 for a fresh fruity floral because God knows we have a million fresh fruity florals on the planet. That's way too much money. However, you guys, this is truly a special perfume. It's one of the most beautiful perfumes I think that has ever been created. And I'm enjoying this so much now which is bizarre considering a year and a half ago, I didn't understand the hype. This is one of those perfumes that I had to take my time with, similar to Baccarat Rouge. I did not understand the hype with Baccarat Rouge when I first smelt it. Grease Charnel from BDK, I did not care for that one when I first smelt it. Like there's some niche perfumes that are just a lot and niche perfumes are, sometimes they can take some getting used to. You're not going to fall in love with niche perfumes right off the bat. I think, because niche perfumes are so different. They definitely don't smell like your typical designer perfume. A lot of times they push the boundaries, they test different notes, and they're gonna smell very unique. They're gonna smell unlike any designer perfume you've ever smelled. Oh, you guys, I don't, I don't know what it is, but there's something about this perfume that I'm just like, I didn't see it before. Like I didn't, I didn't get it before, and now I get it. <laughs> um, so yeah. This perfume is one I've been kind of craving for some reason. Every time I've smelt my Delina exclusive lately, I've been thinking, oh my gosh, I feel like I'd really love the original Delina now. I don't know what it is. I just feel like I would love it. And yeah, I was right. So you guys, I did not pay full price for this, by the way. I got this from Fragrance Buy, so I paid almost half price. So if you're looking for Delina or any other expensive niche perfumes and you're a little bit leery about paying full price, definitely check out um, fragrancebuy.ca. You can get them for a steal of a deal. You're not gonna pay full price, they are legit. So yeah, that is Delina from Parfum de Marly. So happy to have this one back. I feel like Delina exclusive is a little too heavy for summertime day, but this one is perfect for summer time day so I'm really really excited to have this one back in my collection and the second last perfume before we get into the one I'm most excited to share with you guys is Bulgari Omnia Coral so this was a blind purchase I didn't pay full price again I got this from fragrance buy um, and the reason I got this perfume is because I have been kind of trying out lots of like fresh summer musky fruity floral fragrances looking for easy reaches and I heard really good things about this one so I blind purchased it I heard that a lot of people like this one better than the uh, pink better than the the um, original Crystalline. I heard a lot of people really liked this one and it had really good ratings and the notes looked really pretty. So the notes that you have in here are bergamot, goji berries, pomegranate, hibiscus, water lily, musk, and Virginia cedar. And you guys, I'll be honest, I'm not really taken with this perfume. I'm not really blown away with it. I don't know how much I love it yet. Um, I have to say it is pretty long lasting. I had one spray on my arm the other day and I could smell it all day long um, and it actually came through my shirt and it was actually quite overpowering almost like it was a very strong perfume it's pretty it's okay it's I have to say like there's nothing wrong with it but it's not 100% my scent profile so I really don't know how long I'm going to keep this um, it was a blind buy I just wanted to share my thoughts on it with you I kind of don't think it's going to be in my collection for a long time. I'm also not a huge fan of the bottle. Not that that matters. If I love the scent, the bottle doesn't really matter, but I just don't love the bottle. Like it's not that it's plastic. I don't like that you push it like this. Like it's just, it's kind of a bulky, odd bottle that I don't know. It's just, it's, it's just okay for me. I really don't think I'm going to keep it because if I have other perfumes like Delina and Miss Dior, other perfumes that I love so much, um, I don't really have room in my collection to keep ones that are sort of just okay. So yeah, this one is going to be probably going. So if anybody's interested in buying Omnia Coral from me for a really good deal, please let me know. Um, but yeah, I just want to give my thoughts. I do think that a lot of people would love this. I think it would be a great easy grab and go scent for like the gym or really hot days or running errands or whatever. It's kind of just like a basic easy grab and go. And I don't mean basic in a bad way, but like easy grab and go everyday scent. Um, yeah, so that is Bulgari Omnia Coral. Okay, you guys, and now for the star of the show. I hope you're still here. If you're here, thank you for watching my video to the end. <laughs> this perfume, you guys, oh, I, I can't even be begin to tell you how happy I am that I purchased this perfume. This was the recommendation from Amanda Soignier. I saw that she had purchased it. I saw her talk about it in her videos. I told her that she piqued my interest and she really encouraged me to get this perfume. She said, you're gonna love it. You're gonna love it. Honestly, just get it. And it was a blind purchase. And 
she knows that I don't love a lot of super um, deep, dark, woody fragrances. This is not a deep, dark, woody perfume, although it does have a woody aspect to it, but that was the only thing she cautioned me with. She said, it is a little bit woody, so I don't know if that will be your thing, but you guys, I bit the bullet and I purchased it because she made it sound so gorgeous and the notes on Fragrantica looked so good. And I have to tell you, this is probably my best purchase of 2021. I said it, <laughs> my best purchase of 2021. So let me give you a close up of the bottle. So this is the Armani Privé. Did I even say what it is? Armani Privé Blue Turquoise. This is what the bottle looks like. It's like this gorgeous turquoise marble. It's so shiny, it's so beautiful. Um, it has the gold plaque on the front. The bottle is absolutely exquisite, you guys, and the scent inside is even more beautiful than the bottle. So the notes you have in here are salt, incense, and black pepper in the opening. In the middle, you have a Lang Lang Cipriol oil, which I'm not sure what Cipriol oil smells like, but I can imagine it would smell a little bit like almost like a pine or spruce or cypress kind of a smell because there is a little bit of that sort of a green like cypress type of quality in here. There's Indian jasmine and in the base there is vanilla, moss, and sandalwood. And how do I even begin describing what this perfume smells like? So this perfume to me smells like the most expensive luxury vacation you've ever taken. I am thinking um, seaside, I'm thinking ocean, I'm thinking spa. It smells like an expensive spa treatment, but it also smells like you're at the ocean, you have this sensual, salty, vanilla sort of a perfume. It smells to me like you're on vacation at the most expensive, luxury, relaxing, bougie, posh resort you can ever think of. And at the same time, there is this feminine sensuality about it. This perfume, you guys, is so long lasting. I had one spray of this on my arm and I smelt it the entire day. And the dry down of this perfume is absolute heaven. The dry down of this perfume is heaven. This is not a linear fragrance. When you first spray it, you get this like kind of a salty, incense-y, um, cypriol oil, like a little bit of a green, woody, opening, very salty and it's it's kind of fresh, but it's very spa-like and relaxing at the same time. And then a few minutes later, you get that like gorgeous Ylang and Jasmine kind of peeking through and you're starting to think about tropical luxurious flowers. Like you're on vacation and you have a foyer and the foyer is filled with beautiful tropical lush flowers on top of this kind of salty cypriol background. As it starts to dry down, out comes this vanilla and the vanilla is like, you guys, I can't even, I can't even describe how good this smells. You just have to smell it. So let me take the lid off again. And this is what it looks like without the lid. Oh my gosh, you guys, I can't even tell you. Oh, I can't even tell you. I can't even tell you. <laughs> it smells so, so beautiful. So beautiful. Mm. Okay. <laughs> At the bottle, it's your tropical lush, um, not tropical like coconutty by the way, it's not like that. It's just like you're at the beach in the evening, super luxurious, like the most posh, luxurious seaside resort you've ever been at. Oh my gosh, I can't even tell you. I just can't even tell you. You have this vanilla coming through. It's just so good. It's just so good. <laughs> um, I have been on vacation near the ocean multiple times. And let me tell you when that feeling you get when you walk through the foyer of a very expensive hotel and you can smell a little bit of that salty ocean air, but there's this air inside the hotel of like um, richness and opulence and you have a beautiful handbag and you also smell feminine and sensual and just addictive. It's an addictive perfume. I can't, I can't even describe to you. Like when Amanda was describing it, she made me want it right away. The way she talked about it, she made me want it. And I, words do not do it justice. Like you can try to talk about what it smells like, but words do not do it justice. I would recommend smelling it. I wouldn't say blind buy it unless you're crazy like me and you like to blind buy expensive perfumes. Um, this perfume I purchased from the Bay in Canada. So I did pay uh, $265 plus tax plus shipping. Actually, I think it was free shipping. Um, worth every penny, worth every penny. 
penny. Like when I'm telling you guys, this is my best purchase of 2021. I'm not kidding with you. Um, one of the best perfumes I have in my collection. Absolutely. It, it's so stunning and it's so different. It's so unique. I have nothing like it. It's incredible. Like well done Armani Privé. Well done. <laughs> so yeah, check this out if you haven't, you guys, I'm telling you, I will have it linked down below. And if you're anything like me, if we have similar tastes, if you like salty vanilla perfumes, no, it's nothing like Paco Rabanne. People have asked me how similar is it to Paco Rabanne. It's not that similar. They're quite different. If you like perfume the same as I do, there's a good chance you might like it. Please don't blind buy it and hate it and come for me. But if you do try it out, I hope you love it. So Armani Privé Blue Turquoise absolutely stunning. So you guys, let me just quickly recap as I like to do for you at the end of my video. So we have my Miss Dior Eau de Parfum, which is just my backup box because I love that perfume. We have Delina from Parfum de Marly, which just took a really long time to grow on me, but one of the most beautiful, unique, rosy, lychee scents I've ever smelt. We have Omnia Coral, which is not groundbreaking and I don't love it, not my favorite scent profile, but I think a lot of you guys would really like it. Easy grab and go for the summertime, good longevity. We have Pinero's Secret Genius, which is a cozy, comfy, um, beautiful gourmand fragrance, but not, again, not groundbreaking, nothing like wow. And then we have the Blue Turquoise from Armani Privé, which is my best purchase of 2021 so far. <laughs> So yeah, those are my little hauls for today. Again, don't forget to head on over to Amanda's channel and see what she purchased. And yeah, that's it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. So you guys, that is it for today's video. I hope that you enjoyed my thoughts on these fragrances. As always, all of the perfumes will be linked down below. And I hope to see you all very soon in my next video. Bye for now.